Hey guys, welcome to Medifaction. Today, let's learn about gastric carcinoma. In gastric carcinoma, the gastric adenocarcinoma is the most common malignancy of stomach. It comprises approximately 90% of all gastric cancers. But the good news is, there is an overall decrease in the incidence of gastric cancers. This may be due to the decrease in Helicobacter pyroli bacteria prevalence or even decreased consumption of dietary carcinogens such as N-nitrosal compounds and benzopyrenes, also reduced use of salt and smoking food and other reasons such as decreased use of preservatives due to easy availability of food refrigeration and other reasons may be intake of green leafy vegetables and citrus fruits that contains antioxidants such as vitamin C, vitamin E and beta carotene and all. Now let's move on to the etiology and pathogenesis. First of all, we have certain environmental factors and the first one in that is the Helicobacter pyroli bacteria. The Helicobacter pyroli bacteria increases the risk of gastric carcinoma by 5 to 6 folds. In case of acute manifestation, there is less chance of gastric carcinoma whereas in chronic conditions, the chronic Helicobacter pyroli infection causes mucosal inflammation and this mucosal inflammation leads to decreased secretion of acids otherwise known as hypochlorhydria condition and also the pepsin favors the bacterial growth and when this thing prolongs the continuation of chronic inflammation occurs and this leads to mucosal atrophy and intestinal metaplasia and that leads to dysplasia finally leading to carcinoma Next, we have dietary and nutritional factors. The nitrites derived from nitrates such as from preserved food or water. Then we have smoked food because they contain benzpyrene and also excess of salt which may be from salted pickled vegetables or chili peppers and other reasons for nutritional causes due to deficiency of fruit vegetables vitamins like vitamin A, C and refrigeration. Next we have low socioeconomic status. The low fat and protein consumption and high complex carbohydrate consumption can lead to gastric carcinoma. Other causes are due to people who are working in rubber and coal factories can develop gastric carcinomas. So now we have done with the environmental factors. Next we have the host factors or predisposing conditions. In that, first of all we have chronic gastritis, pernicious anemia leading to hypochlorhydria. As I told earlier, the hypochlorhydria condition leads to decreased acid secretion which favors the colonization of Helicobacter pyroli bacteria and intestinal metaplasia is a precursor lesion. Next we have partial gastrectomy. This favors bile reflex and alkaline intestinal fluid. Next we have the gastric dysplasia and adenomas more than 2 cm. The next host factor is hypertrophic gastropathy and also Barrett's esophagus. Now there are some of the genetic factors. People having blood group A is prone to have gastric carcinomas. Then there are family history of gastric carcinoma. Then there is hereditary non-polyposis colon cancer syndrome otherwise HNPCC. Other genetic factors include familial gastric carcinoma syndrome where the E cathedral protein mutation occurs. Then we have Leifromae syndrome. Now let's move on to the pathogenesis. First of all, familial gastric cancer. The germline loss of function mutations in the 
tumor suppressor gene CDH1 is strongly associated with familial gastric cancer. The gene CDH1 encodes the cell adhesion protein that is E cadherin. Now let's move on to sporadic gastric cancer. The sporadic diffuse gastric cancers show loss of E cadherin and is the key step in the development of diffuse gastric cancer. This may be by the following mechanism. The loss of function mutations in the tumor suppressor gene that is CDH is also observed in about 50% of sporadic diffuse gastric tumors. The hypermethylation and silencing of the CDH1 promoter which decreases the E cadherin protein expression. Next we have the BRCA2 gene mutations. Increased risk of diffuse gastric cancer. The CDH1 mutations are also common in sporadic and familial lobular carcinoma of breast. These breast tumors similar to diffuse gastric carcinoma infiltrate as single cells. The sporadic intestinal type gastric cancers. In this, the mutations causing increased signaling via the WNT pathway. This may be due to loss of function mutations in the adenomatous polyposis coli, otherwise known as APC tumor suppressor gene and gain of function mutation in the gene encoding catenin. Mutation of TP53 in majority of sporadic gastric cancers of both diffuse and intestinal type. We will be discussing about these two types in upcoming slides. The loss of function mutations in other genes. These include other tumor suppressor genes that, that are the gene involved in the regulation of apoptosis like the Bax gene and the cell cycle controlling gene such as CDKN2A. Now let's move on to the morphology. Site of occurrence. In 50 to 60 percentage of cases, the gastric carcinoma occurs in the pylorus and antrum region. 25 percentage, it will be occurring in the cardiac region. And in case of 15 to 25 percentage, the carcinoma will be occurring on the body right here and the fundus part. So, the lesser curvature right here is involved more than approximately 40 percentage than the greater curvature. The most favored site is the lesser curvature of the antropyloric region. Now let's see about the classification. These are based on the depth of invasion, the macroscopic growth pattern and histologic subtypes. Let's look into it in detail. First of all, based on depth of invasion. First, we have the early gastric carcinoma. It is defined as an invasive cancer that is limited to the mucosa. This is the mucosa and the submucosa right here. Till here is the submucosa. With or without perigastric lymph node metastasis. It is not synonymous with carcinoma in situ which is confined to the surface epithelial layer. The early gastric cancer is a pathologic diagnosis based on depth of invasion and is associated with better prognosis. Next we have the advanced gastric carcinoma. It is a neoplasm that has extended below the submucosa into the muscular wall. This is the muscular wall infiltration. All cancers may begin as early lesions which develop into advanced lesions. It is associated with poor prognosis. Now based on the macroscopic growth pattern. In this three patterns are observed and are used for both early and advanced gastric cancers. First let's see the type 1 otherwise known as exophytic. It is a solid tumor which 
projects or protrudes into the lumen as a polyploid or nodular mass. Next is the type 2. In type 2, there is flat or depressed. It is a superficial flat lesion with no obvious tumor mass within the mucosa and may be slightly elevated or depressed. By this, it is classified into three types. First one is the type 2A. Here you can appreciate an elevation. And next we have the flat type that is type 2B. Right here you can see it's flat. And next you have this third type that is depressed. See the depression. The third type otherwise known as the excavated type. It is characterized by a shallow or deeply erosive crater in the wall of stomach right here. An excavated malignant ulcer does not ordinarily occur alone but rather represents ulceration of type 1 or type 2 tumors. They are closely resembled with chronic peptic ulcers. The mucosa surrounding the ulcer appears firm, raised and nodular. Characteristically, the margins of the ulcer are heaped up, beaded, shaggy and irregular and the base is ragged and necrotic. This is in contrast to that of the benign peptic ulcer which shows punched out margins and a smooth base. Now let's move on to the Loren classification depending on the histologic type. According to this, there are two important types. First one is the intestinal type and the next one is the diffuse type. First of all, let's check the intestinal type. Grossly, it forms polyploid bulky tumors or may be ulcerated. Microscopically, it consists of cohesive tumor cells that form gland-like tubular structures resembling adenocarcinoma of colon. It probably arises in areas of intestinal metaplasia. The tumor cells shows epical mucin vacuoles and mucin may be present in the lumen of the glands. So, this picture gives you a clear idea. Here, you can appreciate the apical mucin vacuoles right here this white color and also these are nothing but the tumor cells forming gland like structures and right here you have blood vessels now the next one which is the diffuse or infiltrating gastric adenocarcinoma so grossly, the diffuse gastric cancer infiltrates deep into the stomach without forming obvious mass lesions. It involves broad region or entire stomach with local rigidity of the wall. The elicit desmoplastic reaction produces diffuse flattening of rugal fold in the mucosa and rigid widespread thickening of the wall. If the entire stomach is involved, it may become not distensible and lumen is narrowed producing a leather bottle appearance which is termed as linitis plastic. Now let's move on to the microscopy. So these are composed of discohesive that is cohesion is absent because of the loss of E. cadherin protein. So this is a discohesive tumor cell which do not form glands. The tumor cells infiltrate and thicken the stomach wall without forming a discrete mass. The tumor cells contain abundant mucin which expand the cytoplasm and pushes the nucleus to the periphery creating a signet ring cell appearance. Right here you can appreciate the signet ring appearance. If the signet ring cell constitutes more than 50% of the tumor, it is classified as 
signet ring cell carcinoma. So as I told earlier, this is the signet ring cells with peripheral compressed nucleus due to mucins. Now let's see the spread of carcinoma stomach. First of all, we have the local or direct spread. It spreads into the muscularis and serosa of the stomach and it can invade into the duodenum, pancreas, liver, colon and even retroperitoneum. Next we have the lymphatic spread. It spreads via the submucosal and subserosal lymphatics to both regional and distant lymph nodes. Pattern of lymph node involvement depends on the site of tumor. Frequently metastasis to the supraventricular sentinel otherwise which are node and may be the first clinical manifestation of an occult neoplasm otherwise troisius sign. Left axillary lymph node is known as the Irish node. Then there may be metastasis to the periumbilical lymph node and this forms a subcutaneous nodule called the sister Mary Joseph nodule because after the nurse who noted this lesion as a marker of metastasic carcinoma. So this nodule represents the metastasis from gastrointestinal tract malignancies in about 50% of cases and includes carcinoma of stomach, most common, and colon and even pancreas. Other primary sites include carcinoma of ovary and uterus. Metastasis to the ovaries is called Krukenberg tumor. Next we have blood spread. It can also spread via the portal vein into the liver and other sites are lungs and bones. Hope you understood the video. Like, subscribe and press the bell button for more videos. Thank you. Thanks for listening.